Hello, and welcome to the Wayward Skein podcast. Today is Sunday, August 5th. Um, it's actually my 18th wedding anniversary. <laughs> we we split up after four years, but yeah, today would have been our wedding anniversary, so huh, that's a little weird. Um, I'm Lynn. I'm your host. I'm also known as Toll Baby on Ravelry, Instagram, all the places. Toll Baby, you can find me pretty much anywhere. Um, so anyway, this is episode eight. And if you're new here, I hope you enjoy it. And if you've come back, my God, you have patience. <laughs> you have put up with a lot of my faults. So I'm very grateful to everyone who's come back. I'm very happy to see any newcomers. And uh, let's jump right in. So I'm, I'm sort of very, very slowly sipping my tea. It's very hot. You can actually see the steam against my shirt. I literally just, just made it. So tonight I am drinking some David's tea again. Duh. <laughs> it's almost always David's tea. But I am drinking just peachy, which is a herbal tea. There you go. You can see what's in it. It's a very subtle tea. Haha, <laughs> subtle tea. Um, it, it's a very smooth peachy flavor. It's got apple, it's got uh, blackberry leaves, it's got peach, it's got, uh, I don't know, stuff. It's delicious. It's got a little bit of, a little hint of sweetness to it. There is a teeny bit of sugar in the peaches. Um, and it's just one of my night. It's a f really refreshing summer tea. It's really, really good iced. But um, I just got home from my mom's about 20 minutes ago, so I didn't have time to ice it. There's no ice in my freezer. <laughs> so it's hot. I will finish it at some point tonight. Um, I have gotten a ridiculous amount of knitting done. I'm actually a little concerned at how much knitting I got done this week. I kind of feel like I couldn't have possibly gotten anything else done. Um, although I did get some laundry done and, you know, a little bit of cleaning up around the house, but, uh, yeah, I got a lot of knitting done. To be fair, my boss is out of town right now, so I'm getting a lot of knitting done on the bus. I'm getting a lot of knitting done at lunch. I'm, you know, I, I'm just getting a lot of knitting done. So I did finish two things this week. I've kind of gotten addicted to this pattern. <laughs> The pattern is the Reusable Produce Bag by Tia Stanfield. It's this lovely thing. It's a one-page pattern. It's on the back. It's a freebie on Ravelry. And it is super, super easy. Um, I'm a little shame, ashamed to admit that on Friday, I started this one on the way to work and finished it before I went to bed. <laughs> So I'm a little obsessed. I did the big size. I showed you guys the large size last week. This is the big one. It's pretty big and it will hold quite a bit. Uh, this is the first one I finished. This is the small size in the pattern. Now I was going, it's sorry, it, it's got a jar of jam in here. So it's actually quite heavy. <laughs> I'll uh, open it up and take the jar out. Whoops. I only grabbed one of my drawstrings and now it's going to give me difficulties. There we go. So I, I just put a piece of yarn as a drawstring for now and I just do a slip knot. So the jar jam was a little bit heavy. Uh, the bag is not very big, but it does expand quite a bit. Like it stretches quite a lot and that's the lace, the lace pattern uh, allows it to um, expand that much. Now, I feel a little bit stupid because last week I told you guys uh, there's a mistake in the pattern. You have to cast, you have to knit 40 rows instead of 20 rows. Well, the designer <laughs> said, no, no, no. I meant to write 20 rows. You're wrong. She, I'm sorry. I corrected her without checking. And uh, it turns out that the pattern is supposed to be cast on 22, knit 20 rows. I tried to do this one that way. I could not pick up enough stitches along the sides. Now I slip the first stitch of every row when I'm doing garter stitch. So to make it easier to pick up, well, when you do it that way, you can't pick up enough stitches. 
So if I didn't slip the stitches, I would be able to, but because I slipped my stitches, it wasn't working out. So I finished this small size exactly as written in the pattern, except for the fact that I, you know, cast on, did 40 rows. Um, so this is the, the exact number of repeats that they call for in the pattern. It turns out to be this little pouchy thing that sort of expands. It would hold probably a pound, a pound and a half of fruits or vegetables. Um, so the second one, I, I don't know why I just pulled that so high. Um, the second one I did, this one, which has a bunch of balls of yarn in it, so it's not as, it's not dragging as much down. Uh, this is actually one extra pattern repeat from what's called for, for the small. Um, the large, I, I will try to make one but I can't imagine needing a size large for produce. This is the medium, keep in mind. The large is bigger than this. <laughs> so I'm not sure, because the small one is three repeats of the pattern, the medium one is seven repeats, and the large one is 11 repeats. So this is seven repeats of the pattern. I can't imagine how huge the large would be. Um, I don't think, I mean, maybe for like a swimming bag for a swimming, a swimsuit and a towel or, but I don't think I would ever be comfortable putting as much produce as would fit in a large bag because <laughs> I'd be afraid of the weight of it. This is, this will hold quite a bit. It's only got a, a few bottles in the bottom of it right now. It's got a, two bottles of sunscreen and a bottle of Advil, but this would hold a good five pounds of produce. Um, I'd be afraid of how heavy the large one would get. So I, I, I will try to make a large one, but I may keep it for like a yoga bag or something like that, or maybe a gym bag for my gym clothes at work. No, you don't need to come up right now. <laughs> Meow to you too. You guys will get to see her in a few minutes. I'm wearing a black shirt. I don't want to pick her up right now. So I knit the second one, and this one is made out of a slightly heavier gauge weight, uh, heavier weight yarn. You can see I did end up doing my 40 rows here. Um, this is a, this is, um, apparently she would like to say hello now. Come on. There you go. Say hello to your Dorian public. Are you fed up now? Will you go? Is that it? All right, off you go. She never wants to stay long. She just likes to say hi to whoever I'm talking to. The other day I was on the phone with my mom and she just sat there and went, meow, meow, meow. And I was like, you do not need to talk to my mother. Ridiculous cat. So uh, this one is made out of Lewitt Euroflax Sport. Uh, I have no idea what the colorway is because I bought it out of the Fun Minute Knit Knackers years ago. Um, it didn't have a label. I just know it's Euroflax. So it's a little bit heavier gauge than this one, which is, and it's got one extra pattern repeat. This is four instead of three. So it's a little bit bigger than this one. I should have prepared for this. Like to give you an idea, this one's got three big bet, well, three balls of yarn in it. This now has one. So it is a little bit bigger, both because of the, the weight of the yarn and because I did an extra pattern repeat. So this one, honestly, a pound, a pound and a half tops of food. This one about the same, but you know, might be able to fit some grapefruit in this, whereas I'd maybe use this for apples or peaches. Um, I do. I am going to make some more. I have some yarn, sorry, right here to make a few more. Um, and I have more yarn lying around, random sock yarn that I'm going to make some more out of. So um, I am very much enjoying the pattern. It's super easy. It's completely mindless. I memorized it after one repeat. And it's my sliders knitting these days. So I'm having a lot of fun with those. So I finished two of them and uh, those are my finished objects. I have a couple of works in progress. Um, I'll show you guys this one first. This is my winter long. It's longer. I'm two and a half pattern repeats in. So this is where I was last time, this little progress keeper here, which is a lovely 
think it's Jasper? No, what's the... I can't remember what the gray one was. I think maybe it might be Jasper. Um, the, it, this is a f uh, progress keeper from Rabbit Ribbit Lamb on Etsy. And she makes gorgeous, gorgeous um, semi-precious stone um, stitch markers and progress keepers. And I just love them. This is one of my favorites. It's one of the, it's my go-to. It's the one I grab when I need a progress keeper. So, and I found that the knit stitches were a little bit easier to, <laughs> to fold that onto. So that's how much I've gotten done in the last week. Uh, one and a half pattern repeats. And I'm really liking the way this is turning out. I think the stitch definition on this yarn is gorgeous. It's so soft. It's very squishy. It's going to be super warm. Um, it's also got some emotional attachment for me. Uh, when my first nephew, my oldest nephew, Riley, was born, um, I knit him a sweater out of this yarn. It is uh, Filtus King Velour. And the colorway is number, where did I put it? 1317. So they don't have names. Uh, this is a yarn that's made in Italy. And this one in particular is, I'm sorry, I did have this written down. It is 72% merino wool and 28% acrylic. So it's it's just wool and acrylic. It is so squishy and super soft. It's, ve it's a very lofty yarn. It's several very thin flies twisted very loosely so there's a lot of air in this yarn it's a very lofty yarn and it's got gorgeous but like it's got a bite to it um it's not a slippery yarn it's uh it hangs on and it's i love the stitch definition i mean look at this it's just beautiful sorry no nope, i'm trying to go this way one of these days i'll get my directions right so I'm doing this on size five millimeter, which is US eight. These are my carbons. I absolutely adore them. The joins are fabulous. The needles are just like, this is the length of needle that I like on a circular. It's perfect. I find them very easy to manipulate. The only thing I wish is that they were a little bit pointier because they are pretty blunt. So I wish they were a little pointier, but they are fabulous, fabulous needles if you've never tried them. This is a fixed circ. I don't have the interchangeables in the, the carbons, but I'm seriously considering getting them because I like them that much. I love my carbons DPNs. They're just one of my favorite needles. They're one of my go-to needles. So for pointy and sharp needles, I like my chow goos and my high high sharps, but for the pure pleasure of knitting with them, I love my carbons. They are fabulous. Um, I thank uh, Stephanie at Stitchcraft Marketing for introducing me to them several years ago. They are absolutely fantastic. So um, that's my winter long by Bristol Ivy. That's my uh, provisional cast on at the bottom there. Because eventually um, it will come together and there will be a three needle bind up on the wrong side. So I still have four and a half pattern repeats before that happens. I've got a long way to go. I'm on my second ball of yarn and I'm almost done my second ball of yarn. So, uh, I have five. I plan on using as much of them as I can. And this whole lovely thing is living in my fantastic bag from Tanya at Woolridge Designs. Uh, my friend Jen had bought this bag and showed it on her Instagram. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, Oh, need, I'm not a big bag person. Like I'm really not. This was one that just screamed my name. I love the fabric. I love the fact that it's got a coordinating pocket on the inside with her, her little tag. Um, very, very well-made, solid, wonderful bags. Uh, check out Tanya at Woolridge Designs. You will not be sorry. I just lost my ball of yarn. Pardon me. Fortunately, Miss Kitty was no longer sitting there to run off with it. She doesn't tend to run off with, like, she doesn't touch yarn unless it's in a little ball. She doesn't touch my big balls of yarn that are sitting on my desk. Like I have this sitting on my desk. She won't touch that. This she will run off with. A little teeny one. I don't understand it. Um, I have to be very careful about minis. I cannot leave minis out because she will take them all over the house. And I will come home to a spider web <laughs> of yarn across my floor. 
So that's one of my works in progress. And the other one, I'm a little freaked out at how much progress I made. Because <laughs> you guys saw this last week and I had just cast it on. Uh, again, I'm using one of my needle keepers from Mandy Pinecone Crafts of the Mandy Pinecone Crafts podcast. I just lost my monitor again. This is one of my favorites. It's the pumpkins. I love my pumpkins. I'm a fall person. And of course, it's got her trademark pink on the inside. So I love these things. She's made me like five or six of them, and I just adore them. They're fantastic. So you all saw this last week, and it was a cast on edge. Like there was maybe one row done. So this is Rob's sock. <laughs> I've actually managed to do the entire leg and start it on the heel flap. For me, in one week, that's practically unheard of. I've never knit anything that fast before. I blame not having a whole heck of a lot to do at work. <laughs> uh, my boss is away, has been away for the last two and a half weeks, and it's been pretty quiet, and so I haven't had a lot to do. I haven't been called upon to do much. And uh, what I have been called upon to do has been very easy and very not very time consuming. So I've had a lot of time on my hands. And by the time I get home, I'm pretty much bored of the internet. So um, this is my standard vanilla sock. It's based on knitting res uh, sorry sock recipe, a good plain sock by Stephanie Pearl McPhee. Rob prefers his socks done in a three by two rib because he finds that to be a nice grippy rib. Uh, it prevents, he has, his ankles are two different sizes. He broke his ankle a number of years ago. It was, it had to be set with pins. Uh, he had surgery, it was a long road to recovery. So one of his ankles is substantially bigger than the other. He finds that with this rib, it grips both his legs quite nicely and the socks don't slouch. It fits both his feet like it fits nicely on both ankles. So that's what he likes. That's what I will do. This is a three by two rib. I'm doing a uh, slip stitch heel flap right now. Uh, for him, I do 20 rows back and forth. So 40 rows on the heel flap before I start the gusset. And uh, for me, I do 15 or 18, depending on, I'm, I'm going to have to decide on one or the other. I should probably decide on 18 because my last pair of socks, if you watched, I knit one heel flap with 15 rows back and forth and one heel flap with 18 rows back and forth. So one sock is longer than the other. And I feel really stupid about that. But there we are. <laughs> They're my socks. Nobody's ever going to notice. I don't care. I wore them to work the other day. Uh, so they're perfectly comfortable with two different lengths and it all works out. So these socks are being knit in Bergère de France Luberon. Um, it is a somewhat, I don't even know how to describe it. It's a very starchy feeling yarn. It's not very soft, but it's not scratchy either. It's just, it's got a weird feeling to it. Almost like it's not spun. Like it feels like it doesn't have a lot of twist to it, but yet I add so much twist to this yarn that I have to keep allowing it to untwist every row or two. So I get the feeling that it's actually spun more than I'm accustomed to. And I just keep adding that much more twist to it. Cause I do add a lot of twist to my yarn as I'm knitting. So I, I get the feeling that it's got more twist than I'm accustomed to, not less, but it almost feels like a bunch of strands held like straight. It's, it's the weirdest sensation to knit with this. It's not unpleasant. It's just not what I'm used to. And it's a gorgeous yarn. It's it's a very nice color. It's a very solid yarn. I'm anxious to see how it will wear in socks. Uh, it's having, like, the stitches don't look even. Which is unusual for me. Because I have very, very even gauge generally. I mean, if you look at this, you'll, you'll see. My, my gauge tends to be very even and very steady and I'm just finding that it doesn't look even on this so it's a little weird for me and uh, sorry the colorway of the yarn is au vive cat what are you doing all I can hear over there is I don't know what she's gotten into but it's very irritating so that's uh, 
the progress that I've gotten on knitting this week. Um, I do my socks on 2.5 millimeter needles, which is a US one and a half. I'm, I'm thinking of going down a needle size for my socks. Cause I, I find, I really feel the pearl bumps on the underside of the sock. Like I, I find them very coarse. Um, I may try to go down a needle size and see if that helps. I may have to increase my stitch count to do that, but we'll see. Uh, I'll experiment with the next pair. So I'm almost on the heel flap. Well, okay. I'm halfway done the heel flap. <laughs> I'm sure I will be able to get it done before I go to bed tonight. And uh, we'll see how far I get on the first sock by next week. So that's all the knitting I've gotten done. And uh, no, it's not. <laughs> I've got the show notes right here. I'm looking right at them. I got one single solitary square done on my blanket. This one right here. And this is this. Uh, no, I got two, actually. I'm sorry. I forgot to write one down in my little notebook. So this one here is, what is it? Infinite Twist Helix. And the colorway is Hooker's Green. It's a nice, bright bunch of variegated greens. The second square is that random sock yarn that I made these out of, these uh, the little produce bags. So it's that same random sock yarn. I have no idea what it is. I couldn't tell you if I wanted to. If anybody recognizes it, let me know. I would be happy to uh, revise that. It's got some blues, some grays, and some yellows in it, and it's got this sort of mottled appearance. Uh, this is... It does go solid as well, like solid colors, but this is the sort of speckled end of the ball. So this pattern is based on the knitted patchwork recipe by Martine Ellis. Get out of the fridge. <laughs> I don't follow everything according to the pattern. I, um, I sort of based myself on a couple of different patterns, but this is the one that it's closest to. So it's, um, I do these on 2.75 millimeter needles, which is US 2. And um, yeah, I only got the two squares done. So I didn't get a whole heck of a lot of knitting done on that. I was too busy concentrating on my winter long, which I very much enjoyed working on this week. So um, that's about it for knitting. I watched a few things this week. I watched Hannah Gadsby's special, her Netflix special called Nanette. And it, it gave me a lot to think about. I can't say I really enjoyed it as a comedy special. I really enjoyed it as a think piece. Like it's not something that you're just going to sit there and watch and go ah, ha, 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 for an hour and a half. It's just not like that. Um, it's a very different approach on a comedy special. I mean, there are a lot of jokes and, but it's more of a reflective piece than just straight comedy. Sorry. I feel like I'm talking a mile a minute here. So I'll slow down for some tea. It was quite thought provoking. It was, um, very profound, very personal. And I hope that people remember when they watch it, that it is personal. It is her situation. It's about her life and her experience. It's not meant to speak for all lesbians. It's not meant to speak for all people who grew up as she did. It's not, it's meant to, it's her story. It's her experience. So I, I really enjoyed it on that level. And uh, if you haven't seen it yet, I know everybody's been talking about this on Facebook. If you have not seen it yet, I would highly recommend that you see it. Hello. My teenager is wandering around here. Uh, the other things I've been watching this week, I caught up on the Knitting Expat podcast with Mina Phillip. Um, I caught up with both her Knit Crate episode and her regular podcast episode, and I had so missed watching her. She is so funny. Her daughter is adorable. Uh, her daughter, Layla, is featured in most of her videos these days. And uh, it was so hilarious because the Knit Crate episode, she's unboxing and her daughter is like, yarn? <laughs> and she she takes the skein and she wanders off with it. And uh, thank goodness they, they come with two in the, in the regular subscription box. 
so Mina pulls out the second one to talk about, but her daughter is like off in the background playing with the first one. But she's very careful with them. Like she came back at the end of the video and that skein was intact. And Amina was like, I was totally sure I was going to have to reskein that. So it was, it was really sweet. If you haven't checked out the knitting expat, where have you been? She has an insane number of subscribers. So if you're watching this, chances are you watch her. Uh, the other thing I caught up on recently was the Must Love Yarn podcast. It's from the Must Love Yarn shop in Shelburne, Vermont, just outside of Burlington. The podcast is Angela and Kelly, who both work in the shop. And uh, I've never, I've met Angela at the shop. I've met both of them, but I, I at the sh shopping at the store, I've met Angela. I've never seen Kelly in the store. So, and usually when I go, neither one of them is there because I think they work during the week and I usually go on the weekends because I don't happen to be in Vermont during the week. But, uh, and I didn't go during my last trip, which was midweek. Um, so they're lovely, lovely women. They are fantastically funny, great senses of humor, and they are so much fun to spend a little, like an hour with watching a podcast. So I caught up with them a little bit. I'm still catching up on Selma, who is Little Big Knits. She's one of my local friends here. Um, I'm, I'm actually about six months behind on her. And she has, she tends to have longer episodes, so I tend to take them in chunks. And uh, so I'll watch part of it in the morning as I'm getting ready for work. I'll watch part of it on my lunch hour. I'll watch the rest of it when I get home at night. So hers are an undertaking. Like it's, I have to be ready to separate it into chunks. And I've also been catching up with my friend Jen at the Uncreative Ca Crafter podcast. Crafter. And uh, recently I've been watching my friend Sarah's booktube videos. So if you like books, if you, especially if you like romance novels, but she doesn't just review those. Um, she is not just romance novels on YouTube. And I had never heard of BookTube until I met Sarah. And I'm finding that I'm sort of falling down another rabbit hole here. <laughs> yeah, I love her videos. I've always loved her knitting podcast. She's also the, Can the Canadian Knitter podcast, um, which is currently on hiatus. She hasn't decided if she's going to continue doing it or not for the time being, because her knitting mojo has sort of flown out the window for the time being. So she's undecided as to whether or not that podcast will continue, but her booktube videos are a lot of fun. They're really informative and really a lot of fun to watch. So go ahead and watch those if you haven't. I know, I know. I talked about these guys last week. Um, the other thing I wanted to discuss this week, um, I have been trying to follow a low carb lifestyle. Um, I'm not going to get into the hype surrounding low carb or high fat or any of that stuff. The only reason that I'm trying to follow a low carb lifestyle is because I am diabetic. And in the last four years, my blood sugar has been, has not been under control. Um, I have been having a lot of trouble getting my blood sugar into normal levels. And since I started trying to do the low carb thing, I'm seeing some success. So it's not to, I don't think this is going to be the next weight loss miracle. I don't think that this is how everybody should live. For myself as a diabetic, I've been trying it. And as such, I've been trying a lot of new recipes that I've been finding on blogs online. And I wanted to sort of review a few of them. So this week I tried two dessert recipes. I've tried a, a few savory ones as well, but I'll, I, I want to deal with these two recipes first. Uh, the first one is Pandan Coconut Chia Seed Pudding from the Two Sleevers blog. It's twosleevers.com. The name of the blog refers to the fact that the author, Urvashi, and her, and I know I'm pronouncing that wrong, it's the closest I can come. <laughs> I've tried to pronounce it the way she does. I just, I can't roll my R that way. So Urvashi is the closest I can come. Um, and that was completely wrong too but I'm sorry. Uh, she's a lovely, lovely lady. I'm part of her Facebook group. Uh, she has two Facebook groups for the two sleevers, uh, two sleevers. The title refers to the, her and her husband Rogers who each got a gastric sleeve, uh, surgery done and have both lost a tremendous amount of weight doing that. 
as well as the low carb diet. They're, they're keto, um, the ketogenic diet. So they're very, very strict about eating carbs and uh, they, it's a little more restrictive than I can handle. And I, for the time being, we'll see how it works out. But anyway, she has this chia seed pudding recipe. Now, if you've never had chia seed pudding, it's similar to rice or tapioca pudding in that it has little little bits in it, but completely different. Um, I'd never had chia seeds before, and I was a little, mm, do I want to try this? It was amazing. Uh, this pudding is, now I, I couldn't find pandan extract. It's, uh, it's a fruit extract that's usually dyed green, and apparently it's delicious, but I couldn't find any. I haven't been to the Asian market in town yet. Any of the Asian markets in town. I do live in the nation's capital. There are quite, there are quite a few. Um, but this pudding took me all of three minutes to make <laughs> from scratch. <laughs> I used um, artificial caramel flavoring, like a little extract bottle. Um, and I used some espresso powder to give it some flavor. It was amazing. It was the best thing I've ever eaten. I bought these little tiny containers, these little Ziploc containers to put it in so that I can take one to work every day. It is so good. If you have never tried chia seed pudding, I would strongly urge you try this recipe. It is delicious. Even if you don't want to eat low carb and you want to use real sugar in it, go for it. Just try it. It's so good. Um, the other recipe I used was a keto triple chocolate cheesecake from my PCOS kitchen. So her, her URL is my PCOS kitchen. Uh, her name is Mira and she has a fantastic blog, lots of great recipes. This one we made tonight. It was my daughter's 17th birthday this week and um, she was recently diagnosed as diabetic. Not surprising. My brother was diagnosed as diabetic at a very young age. Both my parents are diabetic. Most of my family it's, it was not a surprise. Unfortunate, but not surprising. So uh, I wanted to make her a birthday cake that we could all enjoy um, and not have our blood sugar shoot into the stratosphere. <laughs> so I tried this keto triple chocolate cheesecake. I will confess I was not separating the chocolate out to make lighter and darker layers. That, that was not going to happen. I just mixed all the ingredients and made a cheesecake. It was I and my brother very much enjoyed it. However, nobody else liked it. It was, I was very disappointed. The recipe doesn't call for anywhere near enough sweetener. It, it uses erythritol and stevia and it's a fairly small amount. Like there's all, there's, I think a whole grand total of one teaspoon of stevia in it. And I think there's half a cup of erythritol. It was nowhere near enough sweetener. It was a very bitter very like more bitter than dark chocolate bitter. It was, I, if you don't mind really dark chocolate, you'll love it. It's fantastic. The texture was perfect. It was cheesecakey. Like it was creamy. It was, I don't mind the bitterness because I don't mind very dark chocolate. Uh, the rest of my family was my, my poor nephew. <laughs> my poor nephew is, eight years old and he I think stuck his finger in the side of the cake and tasted it and he was just like my my father was putting whipped cream on everybody else's because nobody had the guts to tell me hey this is bitter and gross so they were putting whipped cream on their cake and my father asked my nephew if he wanted some whipped cream on his cake and he's like and I'm like you don't like the cake do you and he's like no I'm sorry <laughs> I said you don't have to have the cake it's fine my parents gave the kids cookies it was fine but my brother and I loved the cake. It was fantastic. And, uh, but if you, if you don't like bit dark, bitter chocolate, you're not going to like the cake. I would recommend if you don't like bitter chocolate, I would recommend going out and getting Hershey's sugar-free chocolate. We used unsweetened baking chocolate, which is what the recipe calls for. But if you have a sweet tooth, if you like sweet chocolate, I would recommend going out and getting Hershey's sugar-free chocolate instead. And then the cake might be more to your taste. I plan on trying it again when I can get my hands on some of that. It's hard to find in Canada. Um, 
I may try and grab some next time and I'm, I'm stateside and I will try to make the cake for my family again with the sugar-free chocolate as opposed to the unsweetened chocolate. So that was a little bit disappointing, but people's tastes are different. And other than the fact that it was bitter, it was a gorgeous cheesecake. It was super easy to prepare. It was delicious. It was, I liked it very much. The texture was spot on. Um, I did not do the ganache that you pour over the top of it because I already felt that the batter was a bit bitter. The ganache has almost no sweetener in it whatsoever. I was like, nah, I don't think that's going to add to the flavor of the cake. I was right. Um, if I had done the ganache, it would have been really overpowering and too much. So I didn't do that part. I just did the cheesecake in the crust and it was, I liked it. I have a lot of cake left over. <laughs> I feel bad because my daughter was not particularly thrilled with her birthday cake and I sort of failed. And it was kind of funny because at the end, my, my nephew said, you know, it's okay. Maybe my mom and my dad could give you some tips on baking. <laughs> I swear I'm a good cook. <laughs> I swear I am. When I follow recipes exactly, it never works out right. I improvise all the time and it turns out fine. I've never followed a recipe to the letter and had it turn out great. Never. So I'll tweak it and we'll see how it turns out next time. For one thing, I do think I need to increase the amount of heavy cream in the recipe, but also I'm going to try with sugar-free chocolate as opposed to the unsweetened chocolate. Or I may try, I might try a different type of sweetener because I have monk fruit here that I didn't, I didn't bring with me. And, um, I didn't try Splenda. I didn't try Like I tried exactly what the recipe called for. So I may try some different sweeteners and try to tweak it a little bit and see how it goes. A little bit pricey though. So it's not going to be next week. Uh, but anyway, I tried those two recipes this week and I really enjoyed them. And uh, I just wanted to let you know, guys know of some resources for low carb stuff, if that's your thing. If it's not, you can try them anyway. You don't have to make it low carb. You can use sugar. Uh, the only other thing that I had to talk about this week is that I started reading this book. I bought it a while ago and... Everybody who knows me who's been to my house is laughing now because you all know what this book is. So this is The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo. It's the KonMari system that everybody was talking about three, four years ago. Uh, I picked up this book. It's the hardcover edition. I'm really, really enjoying it. It's changing my viewpoint a lot. I am a terrible housekeeper. Terrible. Um... Every so often I have to crisis clean because my house has gotten out of hand and I can't handle it anymore. And I'm tired of doing that. I don't want to have to crisis clean. I don't want to have to stress over how messy my house is anymore. Um, I'm not done this book. I'm in the middle of it right now. It's mind blowing. Um, I'm really looking forward to putting a lot of this into practice. I've started this weekend, but I'm really looking forward to putting a lot of this into practice and being able to enjoy my space again. So uh, I would very, very much recommend this. If you're the per if you're the type of person who stresses out about cleaning, I would highly recommend this. Um, one of the first things that I would suggest is if you're the type of person who stresses about cleaning, forgive yourself. Be a little bit kinder to yourself because it's really hard. We have so much stuff coming into the house every day. Like I just the amount of junk mail I get is mind boggling. Um, so I, I would highly recommend this book. I sorry, it's really getting blown out. There we go. It's not quite so freaky white right now. Uh, so that's about all I've been up to this week. It's my stitch markers keep wanting to leap off the edge of the table. So for, oh yes, there was one other thing I wanted to talk to you guys about, my future knitting. Um, I have some plans for an upcoming project and I'm very excited about it. 
I suspect this may actually become my wedding shawl. Um, I have started wedding planning. Rob's probably cringing right now if he's watching this. <laughs> I've started wedding planning. I have two years to go. We're getting married on September 6th in 2020. And, but we're doing a lot of it ourselves. I'm trying to stick to a certain budget because I don't believe in spending ridiculous amounts of money on a day. I don't need, I'm not getting a big white wedding dress. I'm not, I, it's not my style. It's not what I want. And it's not, it wouldn't make me happy. I would be desperately stressed out and unhappy to have a traditional wedding. So I am actually planning on trying to find a fabric to make a teal dress. Um, I've already got the pattern. And thanks to my good friend, Tanya, who is Celestia 22 on Ravelry. She found it for me. She's fantastic. And uh, so I've, I've already started planning things like dress, save the date cards, invitations, things like that, little things. Um, we're going to have to, Rob and I are going to have to spend some time on some of the bigger things in the, few, in the next few weeks slash months. Sorry, I've just been smelling peaches and going, hmm, drifting towards it. It's, it's a very nice tea. Uh, so I'm actually planning on making a color affection and I'm an idiot because I didn't look up who designed the color affection and I've forgotten. <laughs> I have no idea, but I am planning on making the color affection out of these three gorgeous yarns. These are all by the same designer, uh, same dyer. This is by Night Owl Fibers, who is my friend Rachel, who lives in Texas. She's the sweetest young lady. She started dyeing, I think she was 16 or 17, and she has developed quite a following. Uh, you can see why. Look at these. She also does a lot of self-striping. This is the one that I really love. The oh, God, I love the colors. So um, I'm planning a color affection, which is a three color shawl. And it's a very large shawl. And I plan on doing this because we're getting married in September. We don't know what the weather's going to be like. It might be hot. It might be cool. If at some point during the evening, I'm probably going to want to put this on. So, um, this is my main color, I think, is going to be my main color. And this is her basic sock base, which is 75% merino and 25% nylon. It's superwash, 463 yards to 100 grams, which is extremely generous. And it's very reasonably priced as well. Um, I'm not going to say because I bought this a year ago and she may have raised the price since then. I don't know, but it, it was very reasonably priced. Um... She is currently at Stitches Midwest, which I'm very disappointed I'm not at. Couldn't swing it this year. Uh, finances were just not in the right place. I'm doing a lot of debt repayment right now because I spent two years unemployed. So I'm doing, I'm trying to get myself out of that hole before we move, before Rob and I buy a house and get married and all that fun stuff. So I'm um, trying to be an adult and responsible, and I haven't bought yarn in a while. The last yarn I bought, I think I was actually at Rhinebeck. I think that was the last yarn I bought was Rhinebeck last year. Not that I need yarn, because, oh my god, I have a lot of yarn. <laughs> I hadn't even added this to my stash in Ravelry. <laughs> That's how bad I've been lately. So I have added it now, and I want, this is the first color. I absolutely fell in love with this. I wanted this at Stitches Midwest last year. I desperately wanted it. It was her brand new color last year. It's called Pumpkin Spice Latte. And I wanted it so bad. And as it turned out, I didn't have a lot of disposable income at Stitches. And I knew that it was going to go fast because look at this. And it did go fast. She sold out of this. She had saved me a mini. <laughs> So I had my mini of pumpkin spice latte, but I, we missed being able to buy a full skein of it. She sold out too quickly. So after I got home, I ordered these three skeins and this is the pumpkin spice latte. And when I went on her website to get the pumpkin spice latte, I saw this first. Look at these gorgeous, rich browns. It's a beautiful tonal. And this is called leather boots. 
So, and look how well they go together. I mean, really, how could you not want to put them together? Rachel saw me coming. Because then I saw this. Now, me and teal. <laughs> I, just, I cannot resist a gorgeous deep teal like this. And add a little pop of orange to it, a little burnt orange to it. And I'm a sucker. There is a lot of really, really pretty blue in this too, but I was, I just, I fell for the teal and the orange together. I just, I, I fell in love with it and it had to come home with me and it goes with the other two. I mean, come on, how could this not be a three color shawl? So that's my, that's the next big thing I want to cast on. And I want to bring a, a whip, a, a, an old whip, back into rotation so that the, the, the whip is probably going to come into rotation first. And I think once I'm done my Winter Long by Bristol Ivy, I'm going to cast this on. I've got the pattern. I'm going to ball these up. And I'm going to make myself a color affection. My shopping list for Rhinebeck. Uh, is basically the yarn for my chuppa for when we get married. I'm going to make it myself. And uh, I've got the pattern. It's a pattern that appeared in Interweave Knits summer, I think it was 1997. I have the pattern. I'm ready to go. I just need the yarn. I tried to buy it a couple of years ago and I failed miserably at the quantity. <laughs> I thought I needed 12, 1,200 yards. I needed 2,000. So I need some more yarn. If I can get matchy stuff, great. If I can't, I'll just buy new stuff. It's fine. Um, I had bought some oatmeal colored yarn from Bartlett Farms and I'll, I'll bring a little swatch of it and see if I can match it, but otherwise I'll just buy new stuff. So this is my next, gotta go on the needles thing. The mittens are on hold for right now. I'm gonna wait probably until further into the fall before I start the mittens again. So that's about all I had to babble at you about. Oh my God, I've been talking for almost an hour. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> my aim with this podcast is to keep it somewhat short and sweet. So anyway, I'm going to let you guys go and I will see you again next week. And I hope you all have a fantastic week and keep your sticks pointy.